What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today, we're working on the BMW E30. We are doing that S52 swap, and I'm almost done with all the prep work on this thing. I went ahead and reinforced the subframe the other day, but now we need to do kind of that final thing and uh, move the brake booster over. So that is so that the intake manifold on this, which I am using the S52 intake, so I'm not sure how the clearance issues are on the S52. I know on the M50 intake, it is a little bit bigger, so it probably has a lot more uh, clearance issues. But what I may have to do, shave some of these fins down or whatever. Uh, I know people do that a lot, but we gotta move the brake booster. Now, everybody says move the brake booster. I don't know what it is, like half an inch or something like that, but let me show you the easy freaking way. Look at this, see what this is? This is a template from uh, Race German. He is 3D printing these bad boys. I will put a link down below. Makes it super easy. This video is sponsored by Petrol Box. We got this month's Petrol Box right here. We'll go ahead and rip that guy open. Oh yeah, we got a we got a sweet knife this week. We got the Greg Thompson by Benchmade. This is at a that little that little dagger. You know, you can just spin it around. Anyways, let's get the box open. Uh, so Petrol Box has been sponsoring the videos recently. So big shout out to these guys. And I wanted to show you guys what we get in a petrol box. So every month it is different. So sometimes we get certain things this month. Oh my gosh. Uh, we've been getting a lot of t-shirts recently. This time it looks like we actually got a sweater, which I've never gotten a sweatshirt from them before. That is cool, man. Zip up hoodie right here. That's pretty awesome. Race, break, fix. Uh, I think we can all relate to that if we're into cars. It looks like they're hooking us up with some more winter goods uh, because this is a winter petrol box. We're getting a couple of things here. Look at that. Drive the little beanie. Very cool. Drive more. I like that with the little, the little tassel on there. All right. They give you the little contents of the box right here. And then we got some quick detailer from petrol box. Now, this is actually the first time I've seen any product uh, labeled by them as far as a detailing product goes. Oh, it looks like this one is a cinnamon flavor. Let's uh, smell this out. Oh yeah, man, that's got some, uh, it's got some Christmas themes going on right there, <laughs> if, if I do say so myself. All right, we got a petrol box air freshener, sticker here, this little rally car. I think that's a Lancia, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then we got the subscribers ride of the month right here, which if you guys submit your ride, you could actually be one of these guys, which is pretty cool. Uh, we got a little candy cane in this one. If you haven't realized, this is the Christmas box, hence the theme here. And we got the Lancia livery right here on this pen. So that is a really cool box this month. A sweatshirt in general usually costs a, uh, a few bucks, so. You know, getting a sweatshirt like that is pretty cool. These are usually, I don't know, you know, 30 to 40 to $50 for a sweatshirt. Very, very soft. So thanks a lot for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to it. Unbolt that master cylinder. Basically, we've got two bolts here. Uh, and then underneath in the pedal area, I'm pretty sure there's like uh, four bolts down there. Maybe you can see them uh, right up in this area. I think there's like four bolts. So we'll probably have to take those off. They are all around the uh, brake area because this goes right through to the little clevis right here. I don't know how tight I can get in there but uh, to show you guys but trust me it's right there. So we're gonna go ahead and undo those bolts and we gotta redrill that spot. Now I know that sometimes you have to end up like um, welding on a little extra piece there. Try to connect it back up. There's a little spring right here. It goes on that little pin. All right and that's a little clevis there and then there's well, that piece right there, which is a retainment piece that kind of keeps this all together. Then we're gonna pull that little pin out. All right, this is a retainment pin for the brakes in general. These are held on by 13 millimeter bolts for the master cylinder itself. Um, this reservoir actually like kind of comes out. If you do this, you're gonna wanna bleed the brakes. I still have to do the brakes on this car. Um, as you can see, this fluid is disgusting. I have never done the brakes on this car and they are well past due. Um, I was kind of waiting to do a swap and a new sponsor, G-Lock Brakes, uh, came through with some brake pads. All right, I'm gonna remove these brake lines right here. So you'll need an 11 millimeter line wrench. Bust that loose. All right, cool. 
I'm sure we're gonna catch a bunch of fluid, so I'm gonna try to pick that up, but we'll both bust both those loose so we can pull this out. Hopefully you put down cardboard, so after you've made a horrible mess, um, I would recommend sucking all the brake fluid out of the reservoir before you do any of this, because I spilt a bit, but I did put cardboard down, so that will definitely help with that. Now this should kind of just pop out here. So that is the uh, the master cylinder there. I took the bottle off, I probably, I don't know, just would have done the same thing probably if I hadn't taken the bottle off. I'm not sure. We're gonna just set that down here in my little mess right there. See these bolts, one, two, right there. Uh, there's two above it, believe me, you can't really see them, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and undo those. And once I get those off, uh, this master cylinder or the booster should be able to be removed. Cool, so 13 millimeters, just take all four of those out. Is the brake booster. Because I'm gonna get a razor blade, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this material back. And then you can see we got this little piece right here. All we have to do is um, drill four new holes in those new spots. So they're just gonna go right there. Grabbed a new razor blade, it's gonna go trim this area right here. Uh, this is just kind of some rubber. Just drill some pilot holes and then kind of just grind this area or cut this area out and we are good to go. So I do want to say in this video before everybody goes, oh, why don't you just put a 944, uh, you know, booster in there. You could retap the rod and you could install it in there and it's smaller and all that. Or what's the other one? I think it's like an E34 or like a 740 uh, BMW has like a smaller one and stuff. Um, because I want to re retain the normal brake pedal feel. So that is basically the reason I'm doing this. And I already have this stuff. It works and I don't think it needs to be done. Also, while I have this out, I think I might repaint it uh, just because. So I might just kind of stab it in here and then repaint it afterwards. But let's go ahead and get these holes done. I have a little punch tool right here. Center punch all these holes for my drill bit. As far as the drill bit goes, it is in 11 30 seconds. Uh, I don't know what that is in metric, but it's something. It's basically the same size as the old hole. Bits that I have here, these are kind of like a filing action style bit. These are Rodman brand. Um, I tend to like these for metal, they're kind of cool. Got all four of those holes drilled. Now I just need to kind of notch this area right here. So I was thinking about doing that with a uh, jigsaw. I went and bought a new blade for this jigsaw. I'm gonna try to uh, cut that little area out over there. Initial thoughts are yes, this works very well. So this is actually not too shabby. I just gotta get in there, get a nice clean cut. That works pretty dang good. It looks pretty dang clean too. So I think that is going to be perfect. Uh, let me go ahead and put the booster up there and see how it looks. Ever so slightly, I think I need to bore out the backside of this hole. I think be good. It is really good fit. So it's pretty dang easy to do it this way. All right, so I drilled a hole at the top of the top right a little booster piece. I had to do that so the nut will slide through. So now hopefully this should slide on without issue and I should be able to get a nut on there as well. Now we're on to clevis modification time. What I need to do is make basically an extra little leg here and drill a hole through it. Now, I'm gonna need a welder. I'm gonna need something to cut some steel. I went ahead and just picked up some 3 16 plate because you can see here, that is the same size material. So I'm gonna be welding on basically a third leg to have the same gap that you're seeing right here. Um, also, we'll put a little bit of steel in between it to space it out, so kind of like this little area. And we're going to have to weld that up. So I'm gonna use my Multimatic 215, I think. We'll see, I'm either gonna take it or make it, I don't know. One of those two, as far as the first piece goes, just went ahead and traced this out. I'm gonna try to cut on the line. I'm either gonna use my jigsaw here with a uh, bimetal cutting blade, or I'm gonna use the Milwaukee bandsaw. See what I can do, I don't know. I don't know which one will, bandsaw will work pretty dang good, 
but it's like holding it in place is the hard part. All right, so I went ahead and just clamped it down on the table. Now I'm gonna try to use my bandsaw here and uh, cut this out. Start with the little notch here first, just to get the length, and then I'll cut the side profile. Here is the new piece. Here is the old little flange piece. And as you can see, that is like a perfect fit right there. Ideally what we want this thing to look like is something like this right here. Um, but we need this gap here um, to be taken up. So uh, we gotta get the right amount of material in between. That way we can weld it all back here and make this thing work. So now I have this little flat plate here. And if I cut two of these and stack them, it is going to be the same exact size. As you can see that, that is basically a half. So real quick, before I cut this totally off, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the metal. I gotta turn my camera away so I don't screw up the lens. As you can see there, cleaned up the steel in that area. So now I'm gonna just chop it off. I flipped it. Uh, we're gonna finish the chop and we'll be good to go on those spacer pieces. What we have here is we have the original clevis, all right? So normally it's hooked up like this, okay? Well, what happens is the brake booster gets moved over this way, right? So when we do that, kinda have to make this fit sort of like this over here. Now. You could just hook it up and you just have one pin through it and then, you know, just one side of that clivus is working. Eh, not really that safe. Let's see. So what we can do here is we can modify this. So what I'm gonna do is stack these two little pieces here. Just gonna give me the gap. And then I cut up that other piece of steel here. And then we're gonna weld this all together. And as you can see, we kind of got this like triple fork situation going on. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now, clamp this down. See how that kind of gets you this triple fork looking piece thing here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and clamp that down and I'm gonna weld this up. Got it all kind of clamped up like that. That's welded up right there on that side. And then that one's welded up there. I'm gonna hit it on the back real quick as well. Um, just kind of ticked it up. Yes, it's hot, <laughs> very hot. Uh, so let's kind of finish that off. So I fully modified this clevis right here. I even sanded down or grinded down this side just a little bit to make it a little bit thinner, just to make sure it doesn't interfere with like the in-between of the brake pedal area because I don't want any sort of binding obviously on the brakes. I put the booster in as well. I gave it a quick paint job. Uh, it turned out okay, but then like right there, not so okay. It kind of kind of leaked a little bit. You guys are gonna know if you watch my videos. I'm hoping, hoping, brake boosters here and there's like an intake manifold here i don't think you'll see that i don't know it looks pretty good it's kind of one of those like uh kind of one of those two footer parts for whatever reason it did not want to stick right there maybe it had some grease on it or something i don't know but anyways looks good enough uh way better than the old rusty thing that it had in there so i'm gonna pull that out and uh spin this clevis on so what that's gonna do now is it's gonna sit like this and everything's gonna be shifted over to uh, the left from the inside of the car. Right from here, but basically it went like this and now it's gonna go eep, over that way and hook up. So the little slider that went in here is now gonna go in here. I also know with this piece, uh, people just take the clip and they'll literally take the threaded side. So imagine this side's not here, right? This would normally go here. They'll move it over by one and it'll just go Boom, clip in kind of right here. Shoop, click right on the little pin, like this. Oh shoot, I still gotta drill a hole. Totally forgot about that. I'm gonna go to the drill press in a second here. So they'll put it like this, 
boom, and then just call it good, all right? A lot of people call it good like this. Uh, you're only using half the clevis. I'm not a huge fan of this. I may start making these pieces or selling a piece like this. If I do, I'll put it in a link down below. But uh, I think this is much better, obviously, because you are going to be able to uh, change this. So imagine it was like this. Now we're gonna 180 it. Boop, it's the same initial thing. It's gonna have the whole boom. Now we can do that, but we're gonna go through two pieces of the fork. So it's gonna be surrounded. And then this is going to be offset with the threaded piece. So I like that way a lot better. Um, I guess it's drilling time because I forgot all about that. I went ahead and drilled the hole the same size. So you can see, boom, it is, oh, where do I line it up? There it is, all the way through. So now this little pin slides through here, right? Uh -oh. Slide it on through, a little tough here. Boom, the pin is in there. Now what's gonna happen up underneath the uh, brake pedal area is in this little pin, so this little clip is gonna go boom, right on there. And now it's gonna be offset. So it'll basically sit like this. And this offset is gonna have full, uh, basically full strength here because I've welded this piece on. It'll sit nice and easy. So I am stoked on that. So I wanna show you this one more time guys to so see this is the normal access this is how it was before straight now i added this piece here welded that on drilled a hole in there and the pin is going to go over so now that uh the, where we kind of drilled those holes that offset is going to be made up for right here and we're going to have a full spot to mount this up to i think this is the safest way uh that way because like some people they just use one this is like use one side of this little piece and that's all your braking force on your foot. I'm not cool with that. So I think this is the best method. So yeah, let's throw this thing in there. Go ahead and hook the uh, the booster back up. There is an O-ring on the back side of this. Um, I guess it's still good. So I'm not gonna replace that right now. You just wanna line this up right here. Put that on there. Grab the nuts. Old master cylinder right here. Gonna hook up these brake lines once again. I'm ever so slightly bending these to the appropriate spot. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, hit them with the, what was it, 11 mil? Yeah, the 11 mil, and get them all tattened down. Off the firewall, this is for the uh, power steering reservoir. This is not gonna be here anymore. Actually goes on the uh, motor mount on this particular engine. Plus the fact that I'm gonna be using the uh, chase bays stuff as well. So that is gonna clean this up quite a bit and get it looking very nice. Here's that pin. Here is the brake pedal lever. And there's that clevis. As you can see, it working now. Uh, I gotta go ahead and bolt the uh, booster back in. But yeah, that is all good. That looks awesome. And then don't forget, we do have a spring up here which is gonna go boom on the end of that. And then, like I was saying before, that little, the little clip here, the clip slides right in between here. Boom, solid piece, that is awesome. And we are good to go pretty much on the brake pedal. Let's just bolt that down. Cool guys, I hope you liked that little video on the brake booster uh, relocation. Fairly straightforward. Uh, you do have to do a little bit of modification. You could do it the easy way where you're just relocating the holes uh, or you could do it the harder way, which I think is a better way and weld on that little piece and modify it. So thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll talk to you soon, later and wrench on.